Okay, start. Okay. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, I am Dr. Shridevi, one of the child and adolescent doctor. I believe I am talking to Jilet. Uh, yes, doctor, this is me. Yeah, nice to meet you and thank you for coming here. And today I am here to take uh, details about your health condition and make a note of it. Is it okay with you? Uh, yes, doctor. Yeah, I got a referral letter that you have some uh, this diarrhea issues going on for four weeks. Uh, so can you please tell me uh, more about your uh, health? Uh, yes, doctor. Actually, I have this diarrhea, which is watery, uh -huh. loose. And uh -huh. also sometimes I see blood in it. And it is not continuous. I am getting it for a few days, like three to four days. Then I will be fine. Then again, it is uh, coming uh, for a few days like that. It is just going on, uh, uh, coming and stopping like this. It's going on around one month now. Okay. So when it happens, how many uh, times in a day, like uh, episodes in a day you are having this? Frequency. I will have I will have tummy pain and also I it feels like I want to go very fast to the bathroom. Okay. And also, okay. I have uh, four to five times like this when I have the attack. Okay. Okay. Uh, what about the poo? Like, uh, is it like foul smelling? Any difficult to flush? No, there is no difficulty in flushing, and it's not that foul smelling. Okay. Any time have you noticed uh, like any constipation also? Um, sometimes, doctor, but not much. Most of the time it is uh, watery, loose. Okay. Any time you like your tummy pain is there? Any time you felt any pain over the back passage also? Uh, yes, yes. Some um, uh, I had once or twice pain there. Okay. Okay, uh, so you told about the tummy pain. So tummy pain also only during this uh, diarrhea episodes only you are having or in between also getting? No, only during the diarrheal, before the diarrheal episode, I will have the pain and urgency. Otherwise, uh, no problem. Okay, uh, other than this, any other problem you feel like? No, doctor, I feel that uh, my dresses are getting loose. Uh, this is my feeling uh, from uh, one month, last month, and this, uh, I feel all my shirts have gone loose. Okay. Uh, any recently, uh, have you checked your weight? Anything no. doctor has told about any weight hey, loss? I, I am very busy with my exams and schools. I did not come to the doctor to check. Okay. Okay. Previously, uh, do you remember about your weight? Was it normal for his, uh, for your age? Yes, doctor. Um, I was, uh, sometimes I used to go to GP and uh, he was telling it was normal. Okay. Okay. So uh, do you have any fever in this last one month? No, doctor, no fever. Okay. And uh, how is your uh, sleep and activity? Uh, yes, it is good. Only during when I have diarrhea, I get worried and I don't sleep well. Otherwise, uh, it is good. Okay. Uh, okay. Any uh, thing? Uh, anyone has checked your blood pressure recently? Uh, no, doctor. I okay. Can't... Okay. Uh, do you feel like you are be becoming more pale? Uh, I have some tiredness, but not that much. It's okay, manageable. Okay. Okay, so do you have any relation with anything which is like you no know, aggravating these diarrheas? You do you feel any no, food or dietary item, anything? No. No, doctor, no. It suddenly comes and stays for a period of four to five days, and I will be fine. Then again, it comes like this. It is uh, recurring. Okay. Any uh, recent history of uh, travel before this episode started? No. Diarrhea. Uh, no history of uh, traveling doctor, but uh, uh, I went for a camp to a nearby place. Okay. Anyone in the family members uh, like uh, has this problem? 
no actually one of my father's aunt Uh -huh. had a problem uh, but i don't know the details i just know uh -huh. that she had some uh, uh, problem of uh, passing too many loose stools and some blood uh, and they were telling she might have some tummy cancer but i am not sure about it okay okay fine uh, any uh, anything uh, you have any vision hearing problem any headache Uh, no headache no problem in he hearing and hearing okay any time uh, you had similar episodes before also no doctor this is the first in these four weeks only i am having this repeated episodes okay any uh, a cough cold any awareness of heartbeat uh, no no awareness of heartbeat and no cough cold any breathing difficulty no doctor okay uh, any um, uh, okay any uh, do you feel like uh, you are having like a cold or heat intolerance anything like this uh, no doctor no okay any changes in any behavior you have noticed recently or in uh, in your activity or education do you feel you have problem in concentration Uh, actually uh, because of this urgency of my pu i get afraid uh, and uh, i feel like not going to school when i have this uh, problem otherwise i don't okay. have any other symptoms doctor okay do you have any joint pain or uh, any skin rash no joint pain but i have something some red spots on my thigh but i am not sure what it is uh since when you are having this uh, after the starting of this problem okay is it itchy no it's not itchy okay and uh, what's the like to, can you like feel that or when you touch that there is some swelling or it's a flat spot only no as such i cannot feel i can see clear redness uh, over the some uh, multiple spots of redness on my thigh okay okay so uh, other than that uh, like uh, you told like there is urgency is also there right yeah. while passing the stool yes okay mm -hmm. okay so uh, can any uh, past history of significant uh, any problem health problem for which you got admitted or uh, uh, you are in follow up with some doctor uh, no doctor no problem any surgery any trauma no surgery no trauma okay and uh, for these condition uh, have you shown anybody any test or uh, has been done for this in this four weeks Uh, no actually as i told you i am busy so i did not uh, approach anyone uh, okay. in the, this i just came to the gp and he immediately referred me here thinking that i okay. need some evaluation okay so uh, do you know about your birth uh, any problem that time and what time you delivered any idea about uh, that uh yes doctor no problem actually i did not uh, uh, my mother was telling it was a normal delivery and uh, they they sent me home after examination very early so as such no problem still now okay have you received all your uh, uh, vaccine shots 5 minutes left uh, yes doctor after yeah. it okay uh, and uh, your development like sitting standing walking running all these things and talking is like uh, it's all developed same as your friends yes at doctor. right time it no oh. no problem okay uh, do you um, okay so have you started your periods uh, no still Okay. Do you see any changes, uh, secondary sexual characters or something, pubertal changes? Ah, uh, yes, doctor. There are some uh, hairs in the armpits and also uh, some development in the breast. But uh, that's all. Still, I did not get my periods. 
okay uh, do you have any allergy to food medications or any other things no okay uh, about the nutrition like about your diet uh, how is your appetite and what type of diet you prefer to take Uh, it's normal whatever everyone eats at home i take uh, regular diet uh, like rice biscuits chicken i have no problem with the diet doctor okay anyone uh, like you told your father's uh, maternal uh, like yeah paternal aunt has some uh, problem with the tummy right yes. uh, and anyone else has any other problem no like doctor. any diet have you ever heard about any irritable bowel syndrome or uh, crohn celiac like these diseases no doctor i haven't heard about them i don't know also any i just diseases? knew that only about one of my aunts that's it any uh, okay anyone on gluten free diet in your family no doctor okay anyone has recurrent infections in the family any thyroid problem in the family uh no i don't know uh, about all these things no one has okay okay uh, uh can you tell me how it has affected you jilet uh yes doctor from one week i am not able to concentrate whenever i have this attack i i will be afraid next day to go to the school because of that maybe in this whole month i missed four days of school and in front of my friends uh, i feel embarrassed to tell them that i have to go to the toilet so whenever i have attack i don't feel like going to school i'm missing classes and i'm feeling bad also okay sorry to know that and uh, what about like uh, with uh, do you uh, like any time you go out with friends and all for parties uh Yes, I go, but uh, this is I am facing this problem only from one month. Uh -huh. So whenever I have the attacks, I am not going. I am avoiding to go with them. Okay, so otherwise you like to go, right? Yes, yes. Okay, so I will ask some personal questions. It will be very confidential. So uh, is it okay, right? Yes, doctor. Okay. Okay. okay, so when you go for party, have you ever had uh, like? your friends if this is many of them they have uh, like drugs or alcohol or sometimes they do smoking anything have you ever tried uh, no doctor no okay okay and uh, do you have uh, like uh, in any relationship uh, no uh, doctor no relationship okay and uh, like how many uh, members are there at home uh we are actually my parents are separated uh, uh -huh. in, since six months and i am living with my mother who is earning alone uh, and there is some stress also we are i am not happy from the time my parents are separated and uh, that's it my mother is working hard to take care of us and for our fees and everything uh, so, so is, do, do you think like you have financial uh... like no constraints uh no it's manageable but uh, my mother has to go regularly for the work she cannot uh, get uh, absent so okay I, we are getting stressed with it okay so do you have any brothers or sisters uh yes i have two uh, two younger uh, one younger sister and one younger brother okay are they are uh, fine yes they are fine okay uh one question i would like to ask like uh, in in about you like uh, have you noticed any neck swelling on you no doctor okay so 5 minutes finish okay okay uh so today i took history about jillet is 15 year old and uh, Uh, presented with chief complaint of chronic uh, diarrhea for four weeks. It is watery, loose, and uh, around four to five episodes in a day. Continuously, it happens continues for three to four days, and in between, uh, there are some symptom-free days also. Along with that, he uh, has also noticed blood in stool, and also there is uh, urgency and there is tummy uh, pain. 
uh, abdominal pain before passing the stool. Uh, other than that, also he has uh, noticed about uh, weight loss. Uh, uh, he's telling like uh, there is like clothes have become loose, but uh, doesn't know about the weight. Recently not checked, and uh, there is uh, uh, no other uh, significant history as such. Uh, otherwise, child has another uh, other than the skin uh, spots. That is a red spot. Also, he has noticed on the um, thighs, uh, which is a non-itchy rash, and uh, yeah, and there is no history of fever or any other uh, associated uh, symptoms. Because of these problems, uh, he's already already he lost around four to five days in last one month. He didn't attend at the school, and also he is avoiding friends because of this diarrhea, uh, and uh, also. Um, uh, also, in uh, social history, there is a, a family uh, problem of uh, he's uh, with only mother and uh, not staying with father. And they have, uh, other than that, uh, there is no significant past history or birth and uh, family history. Uh, in yeah, really? in the family history, there is a history of uh, diarrhea in the maternal aunt. But uh, exact cause, uh, she doesn't know. They told some carcinoma or malignancy in that uh, mm. uh, her aunt. Um, so yeah. can you give your differential diagnosis? Yeah, my differential diagnosis, uh, first try, because of the adolescent age with this uh, chronic uh, diarrhea with blood, uh, first possibility I would like to keep it as inflammatory bowel disease. Okay. Uh, ulcerative colitis or Crohn's disease. Uh, second possibility, could be uh, other uh, conditions uh, like uh, maybe GRDS is, uh, but again, uh, they don't have this uh, blood in the stool, unlikely. And other causes may be celiac disease, uh, but again, there is no malabsorption features in the uh, history and there is no correlation uh, with the, in the dietary, uh, okay. with the diet. And uh, then uh, other is uh, maybe other possibility could be like uh, immunodeficiency and uh, if any exposure then tuberculosis but uh, there is no as such exposure. history. Yeah, exposure and uh, hyperthyroidism also I will keep but again uh, unlikely because of the blood in the stool. Okay. And other is uh, some any uh, yeah, malignancy also other possibility so you said inflammatory bowel disease as the top then you said celiac disease or immunodeficiency mm -hmm. pol mm -hmm. sorry hyperthyroidism infection anything else you told uh, cyst no no tuberculosis GIDS is immunodeficiency cystic fibrosis also i thought of but again there is uh, no history uh, of any recurrent infections and okay. no previous history at they presented like at 15 years is less likely okay so At the, your, yeah. uh, uh, then uh, your investigations and management for your for this case if you have to rule out ibd what what you will be doing sure. yeah uh, for this child i would like to do the complete uh, blood count esr uh, crp the stool uh, routine stool culture and uh, then stool calprotectin and okay. also this uh, uh, antibody levels this uh, p uh, aska and also this uh, p anka okay so you and, said uh, also, yeah. okay then at and ultrasound abdomen okay. uh, for the child also yeah ultrasound abdomen to look for any underlying cause Okay, mm -hmm. any specific uh, investigations you want to do for? Uh, uh, yeah, other thing is maybe endoscopy <laughs> and uh, endoscopy we can go for, for the diagnostic purpose and uh, uh, both colonoscopy and endoscopy if needed. First is colonoscopy. And okay. if they think of uh, the Crohn's disease, maybe they will also go for uh, endoscopy. Okay, so you can say yeah, yeah, upper and lower GI uh, endoscopies, okay? Endoscopy, or, yeah. uh, 
then any biopsy you want to take with the uh... yeah well uh, you yeah, are diagnostic they will do biopsy uh, in the endoscopy okay so uh, for any mucosal so or transmural uh, findings on the biopsy if this is crohn's disease if it is uh, crohn's disease it will be transmural involvement will be there okay and also they can have the crypt abscess they can have um, uh, uh, like skip lesions that okay. will be like endoscopy finding mm. so how do you want to manage this case now yeah this child needs uh, um, i would like to examine completely and involve my consultant and uh, uh, needs uh, first of all we have to check the whole vitals and see for any uh, uh airway uh, like no any circulatory uh, uh management needed because she has lost so much of weight and diarrhea so dehydration should be corrected okay and uh, and uh, then involvement of the gastroenterologist uh, to uh, start the medications either uh, this enteral feed or steroid means okay. elementary feed or steroid to be considered for this child according to the diagnosis and uh, uh yeah so many it also needs the so what, admission what's the now according to the recent guidelines what is the first uh, step of management is it steroid or elemental diet elementary diet uh, is the preferred one and uh, and, okay. and then steroid so what conventional steroids are usually started um means which uh, medication yeah, yeah. it's steroid yeah yeah uh, steroid okay no maybe problem. i don't know then if there is no response do you consider anything else if there is uh, no yeah steroid. yeah we can uh, you go for this immunomodulated drug like uh, azathioprine and uh, uh, this uh, also uh amino salicylic uh so what about, maps uh, uh, what about the non medical management in this patient okay non medical management uh is uh, like uh, the weight management uh, should be taken care of by the di uh, like dietitian to be involved yes then also this child needs uh, uh, other involvement of this uh, maybe chronic illness or so social worker involvement educational healthcare plan also needed because she is missing the ch uh, classes and uh, um, she is in stress stress yeah psychologist and uh, support, psychological yeah. support needed yeah camps should be involved maybe referral needed and uh, uh, okay. also yeah any uh, regarding the medication uh, this um, yeah okay. uh, azathioprine and 5 amino salicylic acid we can give also okay so regard uh, smoking any smoking has any effect on this condition yes so what advice you will give uh, to the teenagers so, about smoking in order to avoid avoid chronic smoking disease. yeah uh, to avoid smoking uh, in the crohn's disease okay very important you have to uh, give them advice if they are not smoking you will ask them uh, you will uh, you will encourage them not to smoke in future also if they are smoking you will advise them to stop because it will aggravate the problem Mm. next uh, if this is for remission if remission and there is repeated relapses in the child do you want to give any prophylaxis for them if it is repeated yeah this uh, five amino salicylic acid we can continue in those cases or uh, and also mm, okay azathioprine azathioprine yeah azathioprine and uh, even tnf uh, uh, monoclonal antibodies also sometimes 
if it is not working this azathioprine and mercaptopurine then they go for this monoclonal okay. so stool calprotonin what is the here what you will get if you do it i mean uh, what is the result it will be high high what does it indicate uh it's it will indicate the severity of uh, in how severe there is uh, intestinal inflammation okay and also here this uh, uh, other uh, complications they can have so involvement of the ophthalmologist Uh, and uh, uh, extra you know, skin skin dermatology yeah. yeah good good you reminded uh -huh. suppose by history if you want to differentiate if you want to tell that whether it is he crohn's or uh, ulcerative colitis what important questions you would have asked in the history okay uh, this uh, blood in stool more common in ulcerative colitis but okay. both can have okay uh, then other than that uh, the um, no important questions uh, now i inflammatory bowel disease is the top of our differential but in that uh -huh. also if it has to point towards crohn's or ulcerative colitis what important question will help you to differentiate uh in uh, symptomatically there will be abdominal pain and uh, a bleeding will be more in uh, this ulcerative uh, colitis and uh, in this um, crohn's disease we can ask about any oral ulceration and anal area involvement yeah. so that uh, we important. can differentiate yeah yeah uh, mouth ulcers and ulcers in the mouth and also uh, anal uh, area anal any anal ulcers or anything so how you will you ask this in the history i think you did not ask i marked here yeah. did not ask yes, yes. ulcers when you are doing yeah, yeah. clinic review you did not ask i have marked yeah. a question mark here and also yes. for anal uh, anal perianal lesions or ulcers how do will you ask in the history uh, they will have pain and also we can ask directly do you have any uh, perianal area we can ask about the pain and bleeding okay. uh, fresh bleeding anything and uh, in uh, mouth we can ask directly oral ulcerations if they have yeah any ulcers in the mouth or any sores in the mouth you can ask and uh, you in for the perianal area you can ask any 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 lesions you see around the back passage or any pain or blood in the area around the back passage like this mm -hmm. okay mm -hmm. uh, you can ask but you have to ask this in the systemic review very important when your history your by history if you are suspecting uh, I, inflammatory bowel disease these questions becomes very important to differentiate whether it is the crohn's or ulcerative uh, colitis okay yeah and so this was missed uh -huh. and also you did not uh, inquire little more about this traveling camping or anything uh -huh. uh, as for your differential and you did not mention about that in your uh, presentation also Uh, because yeah. this can be a history of uh, infection maybe from the camping it can be your differential can be infection right yes despite the child has no fever uh -huh. uh, you have to put infection as one of your differentials so this camping history you would have asked little more or any bite also just because she has some rashes on the thigh uh, just asking only this rashes on the thigh what i was telling was pointing to the erythema nodosum erythema nodosum yeah. yeah so that's i asked about whether palpable usually palpable right erythema nodosum sir like no you will feel actually, a bump under the skin actually i may be wrong because at that moment i did not remember so yeah. maybe we can go back and check no problem yeah. but uh, this was there but also i gave you history of camping so if is yeah. it due to any bite uh, you have to just explore about it 
Okay. So this is one thing. And also history of uh, traveling or camping is for infection as your differential diagnosis. And also I want to tell you in these cases, uh, uh, rather than uh, your one more differential will be polyp. Okay. Polyposis coli. Uh, yeah. But at the same time, you can tell you don't see any weight loss in those patients. Okay. Uh, so your, your differential you can give first is the inflammatory bowel disease, second malnutritions like uh, the celiac disease, and uh, the third you can give any infections, but less likely there is no fever in this patient. And also in cases of tumors, you can tell uh, this polyps, okay? Polyps mm -hmm. more than malignancy yes. because malignancies won't present so early in pediatric age group. Yeah, yeah. Malignant. Actually, I just put uh, as like this pheochromocytoma and all, no? they can present with diarrhea because it just before taking history. So, okay. Yeah. Okay, but uh, I, uh, what my suggestion uh, is Age group, I don't know. <laughs> put polyps more than the malignancy. You can say uh, this uh, poly yeah. juvenile polyposis coli. Okay. Okay. So regarding your history, uh, before checking the chat, I will just go fast. Mm. Regarding your history, you explored diarrhea completely and you explored about the weight. Uh, no particular values were given because the patient did not check. And you explored for pallor, tiredness and fever, sleeplessness. Uh, and also traveling, traveling, you asked, and I said only about the camp. What done so far was asked. Medication, allergies was asked. Weight, nutrition, diet was also asked. Okay, only you missed in the systemic review was the mouth ulcers, which is very important, and also any ulcers around the back passage. Okay, otherwise skin spots were explored. Eye was also asked. Eye for vision and hearing. And also you can ask little any redness in the eye because starting yeah. in the 80s, you can just see the redness and pain in the eye, okay? okay. Always when you suspect IBD, keep extra intestinal manifestations in your mind and ask some questions related to it, pain or redness in the eye also. Particularly, you have to ask. Maybe if you just ask anything in the eye, they may not tell you, Okay. Uh, then uh, delivery pregnancy was explored, development was asked, vaccination was asked, past history was also asked, and uh, family history also you took. But uh, you were asking gluten-free diet, I think it's okay. Thyroid problem, can we ask directly like this? As thyroid, she may tell, I don't know what is thyroid. Uh, I don't know, I felt like that. So ask you for any neck swellings or any... A treatment is going on in the family for neck swellings like this maybe anyone okay. want to comment on this I don't know if you can ask directly as thyroid problem in the family okay I'm not sure uh, next social history was explored well and also asked about the siblings uh, so I don't know in the heads how you will ask for suicide or uh, depression or anything depression you can ask but this heads history there is something called suicidal also in the last which comes in teenagers i don't know how we will explore this in the exam we can ask directly have you ever had any suicidal thought or uh, like no uh, harming yourself have you ever thought of like this mm -hmm. so in yeah. the heads history about the home okay Hala, she told that uh, we are separated and we are living separately Education, you ask school, there is some absence. Education and employment. Okay, employment, anyways, she is small. Education. So activities, uh, drugs, drinking, you asked, explored about it in that. Uh, because smoking is very important. You can ask particularly about smoking in this history. You asked about some relationship that was for the sex and uh, self-harm, depression, suicide. Uh, I don't know. Suicide, you did not ask that. I was thinking how you will ask. You will ask a direct question. Yeah, I, I, have you ever thought of uh, harming yourself like this? Indirectly, we can ask. Mm. 
Okay. So this is my, anyone wants to give any comments for Dr. Shri Devi can go ahead before we go to the investigations and management of this case from uh, patient info and nice guidelines. Also, I, I think it, uh, it, uh, she is not asked about jaundice because, uh, to exclude any liver involvement like uh, yellowish discoloration of the sclera. I think it is uh, related. Dr. Siri Devi, your history was excellent um, and hope you will do better in your exam. Uh, I have some queries uh, regarding this one uh, because I am asking again and again, everybody is lacking in differential. Uh, what yeah. type of diarrhea your patient has? Yeah, it's like dysentery. So what the differential you presented uh, in, in a, any of them except IBD, have you all noticed dysentery? Uh, maybe immunodeficiency TB can have. TB can other than TB. that, other yeah, other than I told, it is unlikely because they will not have this blood in stool. Okay, with the camping, as Doctor uh, Nood gave you a hint, what will be the differential regarding dysentery? Yeah, so it could be any uh, bacterial infection as possible. Which one? Which one, like, uh, all which can cause dysentery, like uh, Salmonella, Caesella, or uh, uh, this, uh, even uh, Cardia, I think. Okay, one is uh, Salmonella, other is Shigella, third is yeah, E. coli, then also. Uh, What about this? Uh, no. Okay, amoeba. I see someone has uh, noticed. Uh, uh, another one is a Clostridium difficile. If he's he's uh, yeah, she's already not taking any medication. Medication. I was waiting for Dr. Yasser to tell this. <laughs> I don't want it. Okay. To... Third thing in the year. How can we differentiate? And have you asked this thing is the new one for the last four weeks, or it happens before? Yeah, there is no history before. This is from last four weeks only. Have you asked? Yeah, yeah. Okay. How can we differentiate that this is an acute problem and this is a chronic problem? Okay. So basically the weight loss is there, which is going on. But four weeks, it could be acute also. No, 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 no. It is the symptoms presentation. But if we have to differentiate this is acute one or a chronic one, how can we differentiate? One is weight. Other thing? Weight. Other thing is associated with other uh, deficiencies. Suppose? Uh, like iron, uh, this one. Iron deficiency anemia. Mm -hmm. Or any other uh, vitamin deficiencies. No, no. Only in anthropometry. The height. Have you asked about the height? Be uh, only in examination before? Uh, no, no. Because you see, the, if we can ask Crohn disease, Crohn disease yeah. only three presentation: failure to thrive, abdominal pain, and uh, uh, loose tool sometime present, sometime uh, failure to thrive, short stature, abdominal pain, and third, I forgot. Sorry, this is a common uh, as a celiac disease differential. So we have to ask about the any uh, what about your height is equal to your peers or you feel some shortage shortage of the height. So it will tell us that this is inflammatory bowel disease because this is a chronic one. It's not an acute issue. Uh, Although yeah. we presented with four week history, hmm. but you have to dig out the anthropometric measures will tell, uh, measurements will tell us this patient has acute issue, diagnosed acutely and already he's ongoing, but the, the child, because she's adolescent and adolescent girls, you know, uh, everybody is uh, eager and flying just like a flying horse. Nobody noticed the things just like the, your patient uh, who did not notice and make attention for the last four weeks. So height matters a lot. So as Dr. Noted, infections are first diagnosis. 
and uh, second will be this uh, autoimmune disorders and third will be uh, any drug induced disclosedidium or something Although uh, got, drug not received anything in this four weeks there is no history of drug yeah yeah that's great but it yeah that's great and uh, you did not mention any extra intestinal manifestation of uh, this uh, inflammatory bowel disease uh yes so my differentials i had put here was the inflammatory bowel disease then any malnutrition like the celiac disease and uh, next was the infection and then a uh, tumor like this this four i have put and then you can tell but most of the things you asked this was good doctor yeah, yeah yeah she asked uh, yeah, but yeah. my question is this one because they have to check our approach they don't want to check our knowledge they want to check our approach that uh, we are safe doctors are not safe doctors i suppose means that's a reason and uh, any history of edema any history of uh, uh, this uh, jaundice why you are asking because in do you know in ulcerative colitis there is a primary sclerosing cholangitis and there's biliary cirrhosis and you don't uh, never ask about any joint pain or uh, because you know joint it's pain, also i hard. asked about skin i asked about joint i asked about eye joint okay, pain okay, was asked I... ice was asked but jaundice she did not ask i agree with you yeah jaundice oh. i did not ask primary sclerosing yeah, yeah. so so now as the uh, you have already uh, written the eye examination better to you know with the redness mm. ask for the yellow discoloration at this point easy right eye skin joint eye two thing redness or jaundice temper no yeah. i agree with you uh, all our uh, comments are healthy because we have to um, make the point sometimes what happens what i suggest you is when you are doing systemic review go head to toe even though some sums are not uh, even though some you feel irrelevant because we may get some point there this is what i mean to say for example from head to toe in this history you asked about headache it was very good you explored about behavioral issues it is very important and puberty all these things i have marked puberty you explored behavioral issues you explored which is very good headache um, any vomiting for tumors because weight loss can be a cause for tumors also right uh and you asked about swelling in the neck one minute here i wrote neck swellings were also asked uh, co uh, heat cold intolerance was asked only for me you missed was mouth ulcers and ulcers around the back passage uh, you explored about the skin okay and jaundice even i did not write but good point that these people are telling because ulcerative colitis is associated with the primary sclerosing cholangitis okay So yes, yes. even yeah. I miss this point. So it's so good. Dr. Shaivi, just you to add one thing. Like apart mm -hmm. from redness, do you notice any yellow discoloration? So that I come and you know that you are inferring also for the PSP also. Yeah. Yeah. But puberty, mashallah, you explored very well. Uh, which is very important and uh, since there was some delay in puberty also this could be a chronic issue why i told here was uh, delayed puberty was maybe she is mm. now presenting with uh, uh, diarrhea means there there can be different presentations in these patients right this can be chronic which is presenting with delayed puberty also okay this was one behind agenda for this another one as dr yasser said maybe the presentation of diarrhea is just from four weeks the other things which may affect the disease process from before like the height the puberty delayed puberty and other things also we have to explore this is right that's why i told uh, purposely that there is some development but not complete still it means there is some breast development there is some hair maybe in stage 2 okay uh -huh. yeah stage 2 or stage 3 that she did not complete still in some amount of chronic process is also going on from behavior the traveling and camping history was given to you to put infection in particular as differential okay, okay. this was the agenda behind it okay uh -huh. otherwise mashallah you did well 
Okay, let's go uh, to our investigations and management. Maybe if we've uh, left something. So Dr. Siri Devi, according to you, uh, currently, which inflammatory bowel disease your patient has? Yeah, it is most likely Crohn's disease because there is history of like bleeding and there is pain in the back passage she gave while asking the history. And uh, most probably, because I didn't took history about the mouth, so I don't have any idea. No, no, Are you, according to your history, this is enteritis or colitis. The stools are... Uh, uh, okay, colitis. colitis. It's colitis. So this is uh, uh, goes with the inflammation of ulcerative colitis. Yeah, it could be ulcerative or Crohn's. Really, really difficult to say. <laughs> no, but you know, rectum is always involved. If it is colitis, it's more likely you could. But uh, if there are, you know, the Crohn's has more in extra intestinal manifestation, and then it's a primary presentation. But the ulcerative colitis have less extra intestinal manifestation uh, despite his primary involvement. Okay. Uh, yeah. So, no, no. The more, the, that is why I asked her one question. How do you differentiate from history? The thing is the mouth ulcers. We do, I don't think we see mouth ulcers in the ulcerative colitis, right? So this becomes more important question and also perianal ulcers. Do we see perianal ulcers in ulcerative colitis? Yes, Dr. Noor, uh, these ulcers mm. in mouth and uh, anus, they can present in both, but Crohn's disease has a characteristic ulcer, but you know, vitamin B12 and the other iron deficiency, chilitis, angular stomatitis, also uh, some sort of mucositis in the anus. These things seen in uh, ulcerative colitis also. Okay, so, but Crohn's is characteristic. I mean, even without vitamin deficiency patient, Crohn's has ulcers, but sometimes uh, with the vitamin and mineral deficiency, also ulcerative colitis can have ulcers. So these are actually not differentiating point. Differentiating point is only with the biopsy finding, you know? Yeah, but at least in your history, in your history to put your top of differential, the year we, whatever we put is differential diagnosis based on our history, right? So mm -hmm. mouth ulcers, if you take, it's more common with uh, Crohn's compared to ulcer. As I had read before, uh, these things are more common with Crohn's. Mm -hmm. so in that way, you can put Crohn's as the top. This is what I want to tell you. By another is, another is the extra intestinal manifestation that is more important in Crohn's than in ulcerative colitis. So you have to ask about its extra intestinal vision, vision problem. Erythema nodosum also main manifestation of Crohn's. In ulcerative colitis, we see the pyoderma gangrenosum. Yeah, that's why I told her the this was one of the clue for her in the mm. history. Okay. Arthritis, UVITs, these things are mainly important for Crohn's. Yeah, she asked about joint pain, but I said no joint pain. But if she would have asked about eyes, I would have told some redness and this like this. Mm -hmm. Anyways, it went well, alhamdulillah. She, present, she presented and took history excellent way. But yeah. no, you know, we are very good critics. <laughs> so that's yeah, yeah, we have to be criticism <laughs> is very important because yeah, yeah, because to make them we shouldn't do mistakes. <laughs> this is more important. Here it's okay, do the mistakes and learn. Uh, so just we will go quickly. Um, just one second, one second. Yeah. Only one thing more. I want when you took history, and when you go first of all, you have to say I have to stabilize. I have to admit or stabilize the patient according because this patient has acute diarrhea, maybe he has some dehydration, electrolyte imbalance. So first I have to stabilize the patient, admit, stabilize, then I have to uh, send investigation, then I examine the patient, and in between I have to inform my consultant, then I go for uh, supportive, and then I go for specific uh, uh, treatment. I think this was mentioned. She told about vitals, okay? 
she told about vitals if the child is dehydration she needs to correction no no my my way of sequencing way of sequencing yeah yeah tell once again yeah you are right you told very yeah, nice yeah first of all first of all i have to admit the patient and uh, uh, they are correct his acute issue and then i uh, stabilize the patient first then i have to examine the child then i have to send the lab investigation and um, and involve my consultant and then according to the, the either gastroenterology or other subspecialty needed and then accordingly i will manage and then initially supportive and then the specific treatment yeah so always uh, also in any any case remember to mention the non medical management also in your uh, uh, part like the dietitian the psychologist um, the education healthcare plan social worker all these things okay and even crohn's disease if he is diagnosed they will have support group right yes so very important if he is diagnosed with it you will involve with the support groups okay start with the start with the educating the family taking the education to the family and yeah, also education. the psychological support to the child and the family okay. when we are telling yeah. this uh, we have to tell both dr fatima just need a one minute to complete uh, i will first educate the family take the help of social support involving the community pediatric and genetics if uh, there is a genetic disorder like cystic fibrosis along with uh, occupation therapist and a specialist nurse and physiotherapist just physiotherapist i would specify if it's a case of uh, say suppose cystic fibrosis if it's a case of uh, there's a limb problem the uh, the normal physiotherapist like and then you will involve the medical person as per the defect yeah okay uh, then uh, good i wanted to tell you one more thing and in this history you ruled out cystic fibrosis mainly by uh, asking about the cough okay any chronic cough and any problem in breathing you are uh, you asked it and i told no okay if she was having cystic fibrosis i don't think till 15 years she will be delayed without any presentation so this uh, ruled out cystic fibrosis here so uh, examination here always general ill health with signs of weight loss fluid depletion and anemia so you asked for pallor and you told that if there is uh, dehydration you will correct it there may be hypotension tachycardia and pyrexia due to acute exacerbations they can also have fever okay abdominal tenderness and distension and palpable masses they can present with that also because usually the ileal the, the most common presentation will be in the ileum so you can get a mass in the right iliac fossa okay abdominal tenderness or distension and palpable masses anal and perianal lesions that is pendulous skin tags abscesses and fistulae are characteristic this i am reading for crohn's disease huh? this is crohn's disease from us uh, from uh, uh, patient info anal and perianal lesions this is pendulous skin taps abscesses and fistulae are characteristic and mouth ulcers so extra intestinal manifestations to keep in mind when we ask the history any clubbing okay uh, you can also ask any changes in the nails okay if they see if you can remember then erythema nodosum pyoderma gangrenosum conjunctivitis episcleritis iritis so for this in the history you will ask for pain in the eyes redness in the eyes large joint arthritis so pain in the joint sacroiliitis ankylosing spondylitis next fatty liver primary sclerosing cholangitis rare and cholangiocarcinoma is rare but still you will ask your in your history for jaundice okay mm, granulomata may occur in the skin epiglottitis mouth occal cords liver nodes mesentery peritoneum bones joints muscles or kidney this granulomatous changes can occur in other places also in crohn's disease okay so you can have maybe if it is in the mouth occal cords you may have some changes in the voice 
and if liver is involved maybe jaundice i don't know you have to ask all then renal stones osteomalacia malnutrition amyloidosis but importantly what you can ask in the history you have to ask like nail changes any rashes in the body uh, redness in the eyes uh, pain in the eyes any joint uh, involvement any jaundice like this okay and also any bone pain can be explored if there is osteoporosis osteomalacia uh, then investigations the uh, the diagnosis is confirmed by clinical evaluation and a combination of endoscopic histological and radiological and biochemical investigations so the initial investigations fbc crp we all know that esr and crp will be raised in these patients urea and electrolytes because of chronic diarrhea dehydration then lfts stool culture and microscopy this is to rule out infection serum levels of crp are useful for assessing patients risk of relapse high crp levels are indicative of acute disease or a bacterial uh, complication so crp high means it is active disease or it can be a bacterial infection crp levels can be used to guide therapy and follow up again uh, along with whenever you say this uh, stool analysis for culture and microscopy don't forget fetal uh, fecal cal calprotectin uh, calprotectin is a small calcium binding protein the concentration of calprotectin in feces has been shown to correlate with the severity of intestinal inflammation okay so you will check it Uh, fetal calprotectin testing is recommended as an option when considering differential diagnosis of uh, inflammatory bowel disease and irritable bowel syndrome so to rule out irritable bowel syndrome because in ibd it will be raised a normal fecal calprotectin level has very high negative predictive value for ibd means less likely ibd if you have normal fecal calprotectin by contrast the positive predictive value of the levels above the assay i think no need for this it is recommended that a higher threshold is used to trigger colonoscopy which improves the positive predictive value so if it is high you it's uh, you you can keep ibd as your differential and you can go for colonoscopy okay next i will go for microbiological testing microbiology testing for infectious diarrhea including clostridium difficile toxin is recommended additional stool tests may be needed for patients who have traveled abroad okay so you have to rule out other causes of dysentery like salmonella shigella and don't forget clostridium difficile it's also very important okay so you have to test for that in these cases to rule out infection for suspected crohn's disease ileo colonoscopy so specific investigations here you will tell is the ileo colonoscopy and biopsies from the terminal ileum as well as each affected colonic segment to look for microscopic evidence of crohn's disease or first line procedures to establish the diagnosis so the most important and specific diagnosis here by the ileo colonoscopy okay and the biopsies from the uh, after doing it you will take biopsies from the terminal ileum as well as from the parts of the affected colonic segment as we see skip lesions so wherever there is a lesion you can take the uh, ileo colonoscopy defines the presence and severity of the morphological recurrence and predicts the clinical course so is recommended in all patients where recurrence is suspected so it will give you the picture of how much of the intestine is involved and about the um, um, predicting the recurrence of the disease so all the evaluation of bowel has traditionally included imaging using barium fluoroscopic techniques to assess the portion of small bowel that are inaccessible to endoscopic visualization a cross sectional imaging technique ct and mri are being increasingly used to assess both mural and extra mural manifestations of ibd
radionucleotide scanning may be used for patients too ill to undergo colonoscopy or barium studies. So if you cannot do colonoscopy and barium studies, uh, you will go for the radionucleotide scanning. Gastroduodenoscopy and biopsy are recommended in patients with upper gastrointestinal symptoms. So ileocolonoscopy will be done for the symptoms of lower uh, gastrointestinal tract. So if upper, you will also do gastroduodenoscopy, most commonly in Crohn's only because it can affect from mouth to anus any part. For perianal disease, pelvic MRI, should be the initial procedure because it is accurate and non-invasive, although it is not needed routinely for simple fistulae. Examination under anesthetic is considered the gold standard, but only in hands of an experienced surgeon. Okay. The differential diagnosis here will be, uh, we have to mention infections as also infectious gastroenteritis, then tuberculosis, ulcerative colitis, carcinoma. So we will put just three or four differentials, no need to put too many differentials. So here will be uh, infectious gastroenteritis, tuberculosis, ulcerative colitis. Tuberculosis you can put only if there is clear traveling history or is from the countries where are the patient is from the countries where tuberculosis is more common. Otherwise, as I said, don't forget for the polyp also, polyp uh, and uh, uh, ulcerative colitis as it comes under IBD only and infection. And malignancy, you can put it as the last because least likely in children. Okay. Other things we can consider is the celiac disease and irritable bowel syndrome. As we said, fetal calproctonin, it will be uh, normal in irritable bowel syndrome. This will be one of the indicator to help you to diagnose IBD. Acute ileitis may mimic acute appendicitis. staging and all is not important. We will go for the management. Uh, when you want to admit these patients, urgent hospital admission for a patient known to have Crohn's disease is required if there is severe abdominal pain, especially if there is tenderness on palpation and there is severe diarrhea eight or more times per day with or without rectal bleeding. And there is bowel obstruction. The patient has fever and systemically unwell. These are the indications for urgent hospital admission, which they can ask, or if it's a video station or anything, like severe abdominal pain, tenderness on palpation, severe diarrhea more than eight times per day, with or without rectal bleeding, symptoms of bowel obstruction, patient has, is, has fever and systemically unwell. If patient does not require ad admission, assess disease activity by thorough history and examination and blood test, FBC, CRP, renal function, electrolytes, and LFTs. So this is very important. Nice guidance for uh, remission. This question will be asked in your management plan, remission in Crohn's disease. So first is monotherapy, single, do single duct therapy. Offer monotherapy with conventional glucocorticoids. That is, I asked the name Dr. Shri Devi, prednisolone or methyl prednisolone or intravenous hydrocortisone to induce remission in people with first presentation or single inflammatory exacerbation of Crohn's disease in a 12 month period. Okay, so the first thing you will tell is the monotherapy with conventional steroids like prednisolone, methyl prednisolone, or intravenous hydrocortisone. So you will, you will go for intravenous hydrocortisone if the child is not able to take it through the mouth. If there is background noise, I'm sorry, huh? I'll just close.
okay this is the for the first presentation like in our child it was the first presentation so to induce remission your first line treatment will be conventional glucocorticoids like prednisolone or methylprednisolone or hydrocortisone uh, or a single inflammatory exacerbation of crohn's disease in a 12 month period that means what he is telling a child known to have crohn's and he is he presented with an exacerbation or relapse within one month one one year we will give this monotherapy this is what he means anyone can answer me yes no one knows it sorry dr anur what is your question again my question is this sentence uh, this sentence uh, for the first time presentation you will give glucocorticoid Uh, or uh, glucocorticoids like prednisolone methylprednisolone or intravenous hydrocortisone uh, this is for first presentation or he is telling a single inflammatory exacerbation of crohn's disease in 12 month period that means it's a relapse within 12 months single relapse within 12 months this is what i am thinking is it right i am asking yes yes i am agree with you okay for relapse my problem also i i thought we have to start with the um uh, integration right yeah, next point is there yeah previously when we wrote akp exam it was like that but this is this guidelines is changed from may 2019 okay when i wrote the akp exam it was enteral nutrition first but now again they have changed Uh, you will go to enteral nutrition if, only if the child is not tolerating steroids this is the new thing now okay so i will read it for you consider mm -hmm. enteral nutrition as an alternative to conventional glucocorticoid to induce remission for children who in whom there is concern about growth or side effects and young people in whom there is concern about growth so boys you have too much concern about the growth of the child or its side effects then only you will go for enteral nutrition he is telling so the top the the one first you will tell is this uh, conventional glucocorticoids then you will tell that if there is problem in the growth or uh, side effects with the child you will consider enteral nutrition as an alternative okay don't tell now top as enteral nutrition dr shri devi is here hello uh, yes yes i am here I'm you are hearing right mm -hmm. yes, so, yes 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 yeah tell uh, this as tell this monotherapy with uh, conventional glucocorticoids as top than the enteral nutrition okay and then you will okay. again tell enteral nutrition telling that uh, concerns about growth and side effects in and wh with whom you will consider other medications okay next is uh, in people with one or more distal ileal ileocecal or right sided colonic disease who decline and cannot tolerate or in whom conventional glucocorticoids is contraindicated uh, consider budisonoid for the first presentation or a single inflammatory exacerbation in 12 month period budisonoid is less effective than conventional glucocorticoids but may have fewer side effects so in in the people who cannot tolerate uh, Uh, conventional glucocorticoids as well as cannot tolerate the uh, enteral diet you will go for this uh, budisonide as the next choice okay again budisonide is the steroid but i think it is not considered as conventional steroid okay this is my thinking if anyone has any point you can give me dr noor yes Budisonide actually better for rectal ulcerative colitis, rectal one. Okay, they okay. give locally. Budisonide is best for rectal involvement in case of Crohn's disease. Yeah, yeah, but but normally. But here he has given if you cannot like uh, who has uh, uh, see what he is telling with one or more distal ileal ileos ileocecal and right sided colonic disease as you are telling. who decline and cannot tolerate or in whom conventional glucocorticoid is 
contraindicated. So even in the patients uh, who are conventional glucocorticoid is contraindicated, you can use budisonide, but it will not be as effective as them he is telling. Less effective, but have fewer side effects. And also he is telling about, as you said, if there is colonic disease involvement, like distal ileal, ileocecal, or right-sided colonic disease. Okay. The stricture so, is uh, less, less in, uh, see, there is a right-sided colonic when cecum. Cecum yeah, yeah. and rectum, these two organ is actually prevented by this. Stricture okay. is less with budesonite. Okay, so they will give local also? Yes, lo locally, local steroid also they will give, yes. And another, uh, wait, wait, after I finish, you can comment, just write your, uh, uh, this, this is just very little. Next is in people again who decline, means you are giving glucocorticoids, they are not showing any improvement or even with the elemental diet, uh, you can use other drugs like in people who decline and cannot tolerate or in whom glucocorticoid treatment is contraindicated, you can consider 5-amino salicylate treatment for first presentation, okay? And 5-amino salicylate is less effective than conventional glucocorticoids or budisonoid, but may have fewer side effects than the conventional. So you should keep your priority, okay? So first is conventional glucocorticoids. Next, you will go for the enteral diet. Uh, then after that, you are not seeing any response or due to side effects or contraindications, you cannot give them. Then you will consider budisonide. Then still, even that is contraindicated and has side effects and problems with the growth or something. Next drug you will go is for 5-amino salicylate. Okay, so you should know the priorities. Do not offer budisonide and 5-amino salicylate treatment for severe presentations or exacerbations. Do not offer azathioprine, mercaptopurine, or methotrexate as monotherapy to induce remissions. Okay. Add on treatment. So consider adding azathioprine and mercaptopurine to a conventional glucocorticoid or budisonoid to induce remission of Crohn's disease if there are two or more inflammatory exacerbations in a 12-month period or glucocorticoid dose cannot be tapered. Okay, so you can add azathioprine and mercaptopurine to patients who have more exacerbations, like two or more exacerbations in a 12-month period. Okay, to induce remission. Then assess thiopurine methyl transferase activity before offering azathioprine or mercaptopurine. Do not offer azathioprine and mercaptopurine if TPMT activity is deficient. Consider uh, azathioprine and mercaptopurine at a lower dose if TPMT activity is below normal but not deficient. So when do you add methotrexate? Consider adding methotrexate to a conventional glucocorticosteroid or budisonoid to induce remission in people who cannot tolerate azathioprine or mercaptopurine. Okay. And in whom TPMT activity is deficient and there are two or more inflammatory exacerbations. Then infliximab and uh, adalimumab block the action of cytokine tumor necrosis alpha, that is TNF alpha, which mediates inflammation in Crohn's disease. So you can consider these two. Uh, is recommended by NICE for the treatment of severe active Crohn's disease that is not responding to conventional therapy and other drugs uh, affecting the immune response. So if uh, Crohn's disease is severe and not uh, responding to conventional glucocorticoids, you can consider these two drugs, infleximab and adalimumab. Mm, or when conventional therapy cannot be used because of intolerance or contraindications. Treatment should be normally started at le with the least expensive drugs in this class.
Okay, uh, so infliximab is recommended for treatment of fistulating Crohn's disease that has not responded to conventional therapy, including antibacterials, drainage, and other drugs affecting immune response. These drugs should be given as a planned course for a treatment of for 12 months or until treatment failure, which is ever shorter. Okay. Next, there are some more drugs. I don't know. Should we go into all these details? Uh, so you can read yourself these drugs. I'll just go to maintaining. Maintaining remission is very important. How do you maintain remission in Crohn's disease? When people choose not to receive maintenance treatment, discuss plans for follow-up, including the frequency of follow-up and who they should see to ensure to know which symptoms suggest a relapse and should prompt a consultation with their health professional, especially unintended weight loss, abdominal pain, diarrhea, or general ill health. Okay, so maintaining remission is very important. So for the maintenance, the main drugs they use is the azathioprine and mercaptopurine. Okay. Uh, but if the patient does not want to take the treatment, when people choose not to receive maintenance treatment, they should be alerted about their red flags to follow up, like unintended weight loss, abdominal pain, diarrhea, and general ill health. Next, smoking cessation is very important. So when you are taking history, uh, in the social history, ask about any exposure to smoking they have, they uh, or smoking or encourage them to stop smoking. Maintenance treatment for those who choose this option is offer azathioprine and mercaptopurine as monotherapy to maintain remission when previously used with a conventional glucocorticoid or budisonide to induce remission. So you used glucocorticoid and budisonide to induce remission. Now to prevent the relapse, you have to use azathioprine or mercaptopurine, either one drug as monotherapy. Also consider azathioprine and mercaptopurine to maintain remission in people who have not previously received these drugs, particularly those with adverse prognostic factors such as early age of onset, perianal disease, glucocorticoid use at presentation and severe presentations. So you will use methotrexate only in patients to maintain remissions only in people who needed methotrexate to induce remission or have tried but did not tolerate azothioprine or mercaptopurine for maintenance or have contraindications to these drugs. So methotrexate is next to these drugs. So to maintain remission, you will not use this conventional glucocorticoids or budisonide. It is just acute treatment only. Okay, so this much for the surgery, we can read ourselves about the surgery. Okay. So here for osteopenia and assessing fractures risk, you can also get like in, in celiac disease, there was a patient with a fracture and presenting with celiac disease and hyperthyroidism also. So sometimes even they can give fracture with Crohn's. Crohn's disease is a cause of secondary osteoporosis. Considering monitor for changes in bone mineral density in children and young people with risk factors such as low BMI, fragility, fract fractures, or continued and repeated glucocorticoids use. So there is risk for osteopenia and fracture in these patients. So whenever there is fistulating Crohn's disease, along with regular treatment, you have to add some treatment like uh, uh, metronidazole, ciprofloxacin can improve symptoms of fistulating Crohn's disease, but complete hearing is rare. Other antibacterials should be given if specifically indicated such as sepsis associated with fistulas and perianal disease for managing bacterial overgrowth.
the same drugs he is telling again okay the cazathioprine and mercaptofurin can be used as second line treatment for fistulating crohn's disease whenever there is refractory to the conventional treatments you can go for infliximab also so uh, let's see for some of the problems of extra intestinal manifestations so uh, oral for oral crohn's disease topical steroids topical tacrolimus intralesional steroid injections enteral nutrition infliximab may have role in management but there are no randomized controlled trials so for arthritis some general support with sulfa salicylin simple analgesics local corticosteroid injections and physiotherapy okay you can tell because oral corticosteroid you use for crohn's you can also give local corticosteroid injections simple analgesia and sulfa salicylin and physiotherapy okay in axial arthritis arguments in favor of intensive physiotherapy sulfa salicylin methotrexate or infliximab or somewhat stronger so just no important things only again erythema nodosum systemic corticosteroids are usually required which you will be taking even for the crohn's disease uh, then for uveitis uh, is treated with topical or systemic corticosteroids okay uh, episcleritis may not require specific treatment but usually respond to topical corticosteroids so in primary sclerosing cholangitis if there are strictures you will go for endoscopic retrograde cholangiopancreatography and stenting otherwise you can use the drugs or so deoxycholic acid advanced liver disease may require transfusion so complications we all know osteoporosis this article is really big you can read yourself the rest of the points uh, prognosis i'll just his read the natural history and clinical course of ibd is very uh, variable more than 50% of the patients with crohn's disease need surgery within 10 years of diagnosis clinical indicators for poor prognosis you should know what are the indicators for poor prognosis is perianal or structuring disease weight loss more than 5 kg or the need for steroids okay so if the in the beginning only when your diagnosis there is perianal or the structuring disease uh, too much weight loss like more than 5 kg and the need for steroids is telling okay that's it but there are some of the things we left about the surgery we left and also about the complications we left you can read it yourself so uh, anyone has is dr yasser or someone had the comment you can go ahead now hello Yes, anyone has comments? Someone's uh, this is camera is on. Us. So anyone can summarize for us that management only important drugs. How you choose one after the other? Anyone can volunteer. Uh, okay, Doctor Noor, I will. Uh, as far as I remember, I will tell. Yeah, yeah, tell. Okay. This is medical management and non-medical management. Non-medical management we already discussed. We have the multidisciplinary team, including the dietitians, even the surgeons, pediatric surgeons. 
uh, social support and then ed educational health care plans and all these things social service has to be looked for medical management uh, for the acute management of the uh, conditions with the IV fluids, the dehydration has to be corrected. Mm, all uh, this uh, after managing the uh, uh, vitals and all the acute management, the definitive management comes to uh, like uh, induction phase. In during the induction, the first line is glucocorticoid. Second line is the is integral nutrition, elemental nutrition. If it is not helping with this, then we will go for immunomodulator. That is uh, azathioprine and uh, uh, morcaptopurin. And we can go for the no, tumor no, wait, necrosis. Wait, wait, wait. Uh, the first conventional steroids. And in the yeah. children who are not tolerating conventional steroids, you can go for elemental diet. After yeah. this two, still there is decline in their health. Uh, then okay. you will not you will consider amino salicylate, 5 ASA. Okay, uh, okay. This is sulfa salicin. Okay. Yes, and budison sorry, budisonite comes first, then comes 5 okay. ASA. Okay. In the okay. patients who are not tolerating conventional glucose corticoids or contraindicated okay. or they are still declining, the next thing will be budisonide, then 5-ASA. Uh, then if budisonide is not tolerated, you will go for 5-ASA. Okay. okay. Then the fourth line would be, would be induction phase. Also, we can go for the immunomodulator like azathioprine and 6 mercaptopurine and tumor necrosis factor alpha antibodies like infliximab and adalimumab. Yes, yes, you are right. Okay. And, and then uh, this remission uh, for uh, prevention of the relapse, what do you will use? Uh, I will continue the this as a triapine and six, uh, either of these, as a yes. or six mercaptopurine. Yes, if there is two, uh, when you go, if two or more relapses in a year, if there is only one relapse, you will give the same, means now you gave glucocorticoid and in one year he had only one relapse, you will again give the same glucocorticoid. But if there okay. are two or more relapses in one year, you will go for this azathioprine and mercaptopurine. I think this, if we remember, it's more than enough. Yeah, we, yeah. That we, if we can't remember it. If problem with azathioprine and mercaptopurine, they will consider other drugs. Yeah. Uh, maybe uh, infleximab or uh, this methotrexate, depending. Methotrexate only, initially, if they have used methotrexate, then only they will again use for uh, uh, relapse. During the remission phase, yeah. Yeah, initially. Otherwise, uh, if azathioprine and mercaptopurine is failed in relapse, if there is no response, you will go for infliximab. I think go to the patient info again, just write the important uh, steps of which drug you will prefer if this is failed like this only. One Actually, like, uh, before, like, like before, like what I uh, had uh, memories, like the first line is integral nutrition and even in the um, uh, this uh, uh, during the maintenance therapy, the first line uh, remission medicine will be sulfasalazine. It is not coming here, right? Mm -hmm. Now it's changed. This is changed from May yeah, 2019. Yeah. And yeah, I, checked, okay. I checked both NICE and patient info. Patient info has taken everything from NICE. This management, okay. same thing it is there in NICE guidelines also. So it's okay, okay. Yeah, so you will start with monotherapy. That too, you will tell conventional glucocorticoids, okay? Uh, then uh, if not, enteral diet. If not, if still there is no good response, you will go to budisonide. Still, budisonide is also not tolerated. You will go for 5-amino salicylate. This 4 is enough. Then you have to think about the, uh, what... Uh, relapse how to prevent relapse if there is two, uh, when you will consider azathioprine and mercaptopurine only if there are two or more relapses in a year then only you will consider this uh, uh, to as a preventive medicine okay just go and make the list of medicine only headings only what you will give if this not if this not and smoking uh, is very important mention about smoking you will teach them educate them av about avoiding the smoking okay that's all. So, uh, neonatal, regi neonatal specialist registrar, 
delivery room in the obstetric unit of DGH, Mrs. Mr. and Mrs. Crickbride. Mrs. Crickbride has been admitted to labor ward with ruptured membranes and preterm onset of labor at 26 weeks gestation. She and her husband are concerned about poor survival rate and high risk of disabilities among such survivors and therefore do not want neonatal team to resuscitate their newborn baby at delivery. They have a three-year-old daughter, Mia, who is in perfect health. Uh, Mrs. Crickbride has received a course of steroid betamethasone since admission. Explain to Mrs. and Mr. Crickbride the proposed management plan options at delivery and rationale for this. So again, I will repeat, this is a 26 weeks gestation baby. Uh, she has already ruptured membranes and preterm onset of labor. Uh, they are concerned about the poor survival rate and high risk of disabilities among such survivors and they don't want the neonatal team to resuscitate their newborn or delivery. So you will talk to them and give your proposed management plan options at delivery and rationale for this. Uh, so points to consider, explore parents' understanding so far. Look, yeah, we can do one thing. We can, uh, let's, let me do and we, because, and we can uh, uh, read it later, right? What I have missed, so. Okay, no problem. Uh, just okay. uh, take two minutes to prepare yourself. Okay, okay, your okay. Point. I'll, I'll keep saying. Okay. Just once you are ready, tell me, okay? Okay, Dr. Satish, you can start now. So, uh, Dr. No, actually, they give only one uh, uh, this role player. I think I will start with uh, just Mrs. Crickbird. Is that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just tell one okay. uh, mother name or father okay. name. No problem. Okay, I will I'll tell uh, Mrs. Crickbird. Okay. Okay. okay, can I start? Yeah, yeah, I have set the time start. Uh, good evening. I'm Dr. Sarkis. I'm uh, one of the baby doctor, uh, doctor in this hospital. So I believe I'm talking to Mrs. Krigbord, right? Uh, yes, doctor. Okay. So how is your health, Mrs. Krigbord? Uh, fine, doctor. I am, uh, I am worried about uh, my baby who is going to be born. Okay. Uh, that I can understand, uh, Mrs. Krigbord. It is a hard time for you. 
Uh, actually, I'm here to discuss about the baby who is going to be born. And uh, is this the right time to talk with you? Uh, yes, doctor. I want to know more about my baby. Okay. Um, I will definitely talk uh, regarding this. Do you need uh, your husband to be on your side or anyone else uh, accompanying you? Uh, no, no, doctor. Everyone is busy. You can go ahead. Okay. So what do you think uh, regarding the resuscitations and uh, giving care of the baby? What is your view? Uh, yes, doctor. Actually, they, they are telling that my baby will be born very early. Uh, they said 26 weeks because already I have uh, problems with my, there is some leak from the, uh, so uh, they told me, but uh, we are very worried that these babies will have problems in their, uh, they will have problem means they will have problems in their brain and all these things. So we are preferring not to resuscitate not to resuscitate or not to give any support to this baby after birth. This is what we are thinking because we don't want to have a handicapped baby in future, doctor. We are not able to manage these babies. Hello? Dr. Satish, you are there? Hello? Hello, we can hear you. Yeah, yeah I, I can. Is, I, am I audible? Yeah, yeah, no audible. Go okay, on. okay, okay. So I can I can hear you, um, uh, Mrs. Creek, but I can understand your stress and what you are going through. Uh, actually, what do you think? Why why you think like he is going to be like such as such? Uh, because I know, doctor, I have seen one of the babies in my neighbors. They, the baby was born at uh, 26 weeks, same this age. And he had some problem with oxygen at birth and uh, there is some problem in his brain. He cannot walk properly. He will walk like a scissor with some special shoes. Uh, really, for me, it's difficult. I can't handle these babies and I am a working lady. I can't handle these babies. Okay, Mrs. Krieg, what I can understand your, your, your problem. Actually, yeah, it's true. Like the babies who are born before death, they have a high chance of having some sort of disabilities, and even they have some some chance of uh, not making up. But you know, like uh, every babies who are born don't uh, will have some such disabilities. And you know, at twenty six weeks, the chance of having good is very high than uh, having disabilities. Okay, doctor, okay. how do you, give, what guarantee will give me that my child will not have the disabilities? How will you manage my child to see to it that it will have not have disabilities? I prefer that having a disabled child is uh, very difficult for me. So what I'm telling is don't give him any support after birth. This is what mm -hmm. I'm telling you, because maybe you give some support and uh, some disability will happen. So how do you overcome this problem? I want a child who is not disabled. Mrs. Creekbird, that uh, I cannot guarantee like, uh, I, I cannot give guarantee regarding disability, but I can show you the reports and we have uh, the our um, hospital records and even uh, some uh, uh, data regarding this, um, uh, the, the baby doing good, okay? And other thing is like, we, have, we, we should follow with the ethics and hospital policies. And our hospital policy says after uh, 24, uh, 25 weeks, we have to research it. We have to do all, all the good for the baby. Uh, am I able to clear you? Yes, uh, means what you will do doctor. Now, if your hospital policy is telling 25 weeks, you don't know, you want to do something to the baby. Now the yeah. parents, I ask parents, I'm telling, I don't want. So what your policy will say? Uh, if, will it agree with me? No, but at 25 weeks, we don't go. We have to see the baby at the birth. Actually, we have to do all the research and all the, all the care has to be given. Uh, we, we can't. Uh, go by your ideas. We have to uh, see the baby and we have to do best for the baby. So, doctor, give me the option. What you are going to do? 
Uh, after the delivery, we will be uh, giving these medicines, all the supports. We'll be transferring the baby to the neonatal ICUs and we'll be uh, giving all the care the baby requires. Am I able to clear you, Mrs. Krigbert? Uh, yes, doctor. Uh, but uh, the hospital, you, your policy will not listen to us. As parents, we don't want this resuscitation. Mm, Mrs. Creek Bird, uh, like at 26 weeks, like you said, like at 26 weeks, we have to go with the uh, babies. Uh, but we, we, we can't go with the parent decision. I'm very sorry to say the, all these things. Oh, so, uh, so what you will do with the, how can your hospital say that you don't want to go with the parents' interest? It can be done like that? Um, yeah, we, the, we have the, some uh, some ethical view. We, 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 there is saying like uh, beneficence. We will be do with, which says like we have to do best for the babies, best best for the patient. So we have to follow with the ethics. And Mrs. Krigbert, like I have already mentioned, you the prognosis and the doing good chance of doing good is very high. Even you have seen a babies who is disabled. It might be a, a rear chance or it might be a least chance. Like if most of the babies, they will be doing good. Uh, uh, I, am I able to assure you, Mrs. Krigbert? Uh, yes, doctor. But uh, I want to ask you, suppose uh, if you give oxygen after birth, will my baby be, be fine with only oxygen or it may need some medications also? Okay. Uh, I will be discussing these things because... Um, as the baby will be born, uh, if baby is baby born minutes, at, uh, at minutes left, okay. uh, very early, uh, we might need to give support even at the birth. And most of the times we have to put the tubes and put on the breathing machines. And uh, we have to give some medicines to mature his lungs. And uh, we have to monitor all the functions of the brains. Uh, we have to do scans of the brain and we have to check for the how the uh, feeding tubes and this gut uh, will tolerate the, with the feeding. Uh, this, is, this will be a, a long uh, time stay in this NICU. Um, uh, we need that this uh, baby, baby ICU, okay? Yes, doctor, this is what I am afraid because you will start with oxygen, then you will give medication, then you will do, then you will say that the baby's weight is small and uh, a long time the baby should stay in the, Mm, under the care of the specialized doctors and then again you will say finally that uh, sorry we were not able to do anything and uh, your child has this problem that problem like uh, can't walk like this doctor this is, is my fear this is what happened with my neighbor's child mm. I'm, I'm, see, I'm really sorry to hear uh, this story you have you have seen you have went through and uh, but you know, like uh, we have so much of success stories which we can share with you, and uh, uh, many babies doing good. Okay, uh, why you, your baby might be doing good? That you you can think on that way also, right? Because I can say like two thirds of the babies at this age uh, are doing good. Okay, doctor. Okay, so Mrs. Crickbird, uh, if you still like. Uh, if you still like uh, to talk with my consultant, I can make you arrangements with meeting with my consultant and I can give you some leaflets uh, regarding this um, um, uh, newborns and preterm babies born before death. Uh, you can read on it and you, if you have more questions, you can come up uh, again. We can meet before uh, your, your delivery and we'll be surely meeting you again. Is that okay? Uh, yes, doctor. Yes, uh, sure. Okay. okay, Mrs. Creek, but can I, can, I, can I summarize what you have discussed? Yes, yes. Okay. Um, uh, we discussed on the uh, uh, we discussed on the delivery that is going to be uh, at uh, as twenty six weeks and what are the possibilities that can arise and uh, we we also discussed that. Uh, it is uh, mandatory to do all resuscitation because after 26 weeks, we cannot um, just go by uh, with your ideas or uh, we have to, uh, baby's life is more precious. And uh, uh, we also discuss uh, further meetings with my consultant. Okay, okay. Okay. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Okay, time finish also, five seconds left.
Okay. So if I finish. So Dr. Satish, you asked about the attender, but uh, previous knowledge, uh, did you ask in detail? You uh, you should have asked her what do you what do you know about your uh, baby or something you would have asked, right? Uh, I asked in the beginning, yourself. like, uh, like what, what idea do you have regarding the, uh, what do you think regarding the delivery, and then why do you think so? I asked twice. I, I think I, I gather more questions in the beginning. Okay. Uh, well, maybe I missed or I don't know uh, something. Okay. Attender, you asked for sure. Um, then I want to tell you, uh, you were, okay, good empathy, sympathy, but at one time you said, uh, Mm, but we will before giving her the this what you should always give her some more empathy and sympathy okay you need little more empathy and sympathy you were doing but still more uh, and for this beneficence you use the word beneficence tell her baby's best interest okay okay okay, okay. okay. don't uh, if you say okay you told beneficence but uh, immediately explain it means baby's best interest okay so uh, we will decide according to the baby's best interest. I am sorry to tell you, Mrs. Crickbird, but still we, we, we have to go in the baby's best interest. We cannot allow the 26-week-old uh, baby to just uh, not help or support the baby just to go ahead like that. We need to give her some support. Uh, to give her the chance of survival okay it is in baby's best interest even though if you don't like our hospital policy will not agree with it i think most of the points you covered um, i don't know this beneficence i wanted to tell somebody is writing in char chat that neonatal icu is a jargon did you use neonatal icu in your words yeah and then i later extend baby icu baby icu baby, then uh, tell uh, the special care baby unit also you can tell where all the you can tell where the so actually these things like i even in the patient leaflet they have they will mention these things like some some things it's not like they will be so ignorant to know all these things but are we doing more uh, too much uh, regarding the jargons or like some jargons like hypertension diabetes uh, this has to be avoided but uh, this uh, and i see also they will not understand or not i i'm just asking these questions i don't have no, i don't know they say avoid jargons okay. all types of jargons if you tell but you the, the, I but, the words, uh, but the words they they have mentioned in patient leaflet uh, we can i use, agree right? with you even in the patient leaflet last time we read nec for neonatal uh, yes. it was there was intestine was there there was intestine mentioned. I don't think you will use the word intestine in your uh, dialogue, right? Like yeah. Someone was asked, uh, mentioning like a drug doctor, like a pharmacist also, they will uh, understand or not. It's not making simple, it's too, com uh, making too complicated or what else? What I do don't you know. think? Wait, let us see. Who, who can give an alternative to neonatal ICU? For me, I will say the newborn special care unit. Okay. Baby ICU. Baby ICU. Baby ICU. Yeah. Meta. Okay. You can also say if you tell neonatal ICU also, you explain to her that new it's a newborn special care unit where the baby is oxygen and uh, uh, where the baby's oxygen and her breathing every, and everything will be monitored like this. Oxygen, breathing, heart rate will be monitored like this. This is where cardiopulmonary support is one of the most important in ICU, right? Any child who needs cardiopulmonary support is the one who will be shifted to ICU. So you can tell that where the oxygen and heart rate of the baby will be supported and monitored, okay? If you really want to explain in the exam, suppose it's common for us, the, the words will come in our mouth, like neonatal ICU, pediatric ICU. We can tell, we can translate them by telling that it's a newborn special baby care unit where the baby's oxygen and heart rate will be monitored like this, okay? Can I ask something? There is one point in uh, Rebecca, just I, I want to be sure if it's right or wrong. 
They wrote here, however, if there is no response for the primary intervention, it would not be appropriate to interfere with medications such as adrenaline and cardiac massage. Yeah, even that I wanted to discuss now uh, about that point. Even I read that point. Uh, so I wanted- I guess we shouldn't that. say something like this. Just we have first to mention for the mother, even if she has briefest experience with one of her parents or her family, uh, not only the gestational age, the gestational age, the mother condition at that time, she received steroid or no, all of this can improve the, the outcome of the baby. And there is a large study done on newborn. And according to this study, Epicure study, I mean, they, they decide from medical side and they decide to start to resuscitate and treat those baby. And the, the second thing she will tell her in the unit, special unit, or in the labor room when, when you will get birth of the baby, there's a special team, very experienced team. He will receive this baby and according to the baby condition, they will manage. But I guess we shouldn't say we, did it, we will not give him uh, medication or we, we will not resuscitate him. Yeah, this is my doubt also. I don't know, we shouldn't go with this. We should go with the EPQ study. Yes, exactly. Yeah. So we'll just, but many points here are good, which will support us to tell the mother. So we will go through, but for this point, we can go according to what EPQ study says, okay? So I think most of the points Dr. Uh, Satish covered, I want him only, it should be little more empathy and sympathy. And any word you think as jargon, suppose even though it comes out of your mouth, try to give the explanation immediately, somehow, something you tell her so that the examiner will know that you explained that to the mother. Suppose you said beneficence, tell the beneficence means baby's best interest. In baby's best interest, we want to do like this. Suppose you want to tell about uh, non, uh, see, see beneficence comes, then non malficience will also come. So without harming the baby. So you want to do the babies in the baby's best interest without harming it. Suppose if the word comes off, because we know we are doctors, all these words will come naturally in our mouth, like intestine will come, bowel will come, something will come. Uh, when we think that a jargon, make it a point to explain it immediately in a simple way. Like if you say in a neonatal ICU, you can tell that a newborn special care unit will be, be, will be monitored for the heart rate and breathing and given oxygen like this, okay? So let's see about points to consider and if Dr. Satish missed anything here. So points to consider, explore parents' understanding so far and ask them whether they have had any opportunity to discuss the situation with the midwife and obstetrician. So this is previous knowledge. Have they had any experience among family and friends of extreme preterm babies? This is what mother was telling. She had seen the neighbor child and having some complication. Neonatal UK data would suggest that about two out of three such babies, two out of three such babies will be expected to survive with modern treatment. Well, over half of these are intact without significant neurodevelopmental issues by two and a half years of age. So you have to give them some hope to resuscitate, telling that two out of three babies will be expected to survive. And also with giving best treatment, half of these babies who are surviving, will, will more than half of these babies who are surviving will have uh, very less neurodevelopmental issues. Okay, he has written without significant neurodevelopmental issues by two and a half years of age. So babies who are born, and one more hope you have to give her here is, babies who, are, who have born to mothers who received steroid treatment have a better outcome. So you should also push her telling that we have already given you the steroid and these babies will have better outcome. So you have three points here. You can tell that two out of three babies are surviving and more than half of these have no significant neurodevelopmental issues and the babe, mothers who received steroid treatment have better outcome, okay? All such babies will need some help with breathing, usually either with mask or tube in the windpipe. 
so you have to at the same time tell that uh, what what you will do in resuscitation the baby may need oxygen so you may give it through the mask or sometimes if needed you will put the tube in windpipe that means tube in windpipe is induction mm, uh, it would be reasonable to offer this level of help and support as a part of early stabilization and not resuscitation this is what uh, dr saria was telling Uh, that uh, we will tell this point or not if there is good response to above intervention in terms of improved heart rate color and breathing the baby will be admitted to neonatal unit for ongoing care that is after putting oxygen just by giving oxygen and intubating or putting a tube in the windpipe the baby may show good response like heart rate color and breathing the baby will be admitted for neonatal unit however if there is no response it would be it would not be appropriate to intervene with medications such as adrenaline and cardiac massage uh, this point we are not sure that if there is no response we will not support with adrenaline or cardiac massage uh, we have to see in the epicure guidelines what he is telling the neonatal team will be present at the time of delivery to assess the condition of the baby at birth and respond to early intervention this also you have to tell uh, whenever the preterm babies are born the neonatal team will be around uh, the ba the baby doctors will be around the baby to take care of it immediately and to provide the oxygen needed immediately ask whether they have any other questions offer to come back and speak to them again if they have any other queries they will have opportunity to discuss any issues with the consultant on the neonatal unit so anyone can tell us about this what the epicure study says says for babies at 26 weeks gestation you will just resuscitate with oxygen and tube in windpipe you will not be if the parents are refusing you will not give adrenaline and cardiac massage i think initial resuscitation we have to provide Then rest. Doctor Noor, actually, it's like uh, the epicure study is for less than twenty five weeks, twenty four, twenty three, twenty four, and twenty five weeks. Okay, and this twenty six weeks we have to give everything. And this yeah. Rebecca is very old book now. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. The yeah. guidelines yeah. have uh, already changed. Actually, why? Uh, what I understand is I will send the photos also. Less than twenty three weeks, do not resuscitate. Do not uh, provide palliative care. Twenty oh. three weeks, discourage resuscitation and intensive care. Okay. And twenty-four weeks provide intensive care for uh, or the palliative care. It depends upon the condition of the babies at birth. Actually, the 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 things that is written, if it guess this case was on the twenty-five weeks or twenty-four weeks, yeah, we have to decide on the condition of the uh, baby at birth. But, But doctor, so weeks, they, like yeah, initial resuscitation has to be provided. Given, yeah, 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 even though the baby Every like. Baby. Uh, baby. Twenty-three so we weeks. We will not tell this point. Ah, we will just tell that we will yeah, just yeah. convince the mother by telling uh, that. Uh, what about these data? Two out of three babies and ah uh, will survive, and more than half will uh, will survive. Ah, uh, you Both can tell. Can... I have listened to whole uh, scenario. You can tell. Let's be hopeful, mom. There are data. I will give you in the end. Which suggests the studies have suggested that they are have a good outcome in terms of not only in terms of mortality, like there is a less chance of mortality. In spite, they have a good lifestyle also. They they grow like a normal child. Most of them, half of them, they will grow have it. So let don't you think get a chance uh, to live a life like this. Don't you want to give a chance to him, um, uh, doctor? Doctor, no. Actually, I think like we cannot remember by weeks. Yeah. It, it can be case can be given at twenty four weeks, twenty five weeks, and every every scenario, the prognosis and this data, which is is difficult to uh, memorize at the time of. So we what, cannot what, memorize what, the data. You cannot memorize uh, the data. But yeah, yeah. yeah. So uh, we can first, just first, say this first, like prognosis Satish, is good or prognosis is bad. Doctor yeah. Satish, twenty uh, three week or just initial resuscitation. Then follow the parent. About twenty-four week or we have to resuscitate. We have to try to counsel the parent that yes, there are data, epicure studies which suggest good, uh, the the less mortality and less morbidity. So why not to give a chance to John? 
you agree with me or not for this point hello okay yeah hmm. so so 23 weeks uh, do, do not resus less than 23 weeks do not resuscitate I think initial resuscitation has to be provided or not. Sir, yeah, twenty-three take. weeks. I think no resuscitation. Initial resuscitation, basic. I don't know, Doctor Satish will tell. Doctor Satish, can you tell? No, us no. Something? Yeah, less than twenty-three weeks. Do not resuscitate because it's not viable with the because we, less than five hundred gram and less than twenty-three weeks. We do not resuscitate. Even uh, initial resuscitation also do not give. And not twenty-three weeks. Me. Wait, wait. Yeah, wait. I will. I will send you the. I will send you these uh, guidelines. Uh, I once I get it. Okay. okay we can please. discuss. Uh, we we can we can do it, uh, later. But I will send you in the group. If you care study, I send in the group. Please. Yeah. Okay. So we should just know. Which baby you will resuscitate and which you will not resuscitate? Okay. Okay, no problem. When Doctor Satish sends, if there is important, I will take the picture and send later in the group. Uh, Dr. Krishna, you want to do now? You are free? Yes, yes, I can do one. Okay. Take this scenario. Okay. Today we are doing Okay. Okay. Your scenario is you are talking to Jenna, aged 15 years, and her parents, Mrs. and Mr. Jordan. Okay. Mm -hmm. Background information. Jenna has been suffering from anorexia nervosa for the last 18 months. She has been an inpatient at local adolescent eating disorder unit for 12 weeks. Uh, she was admitted to acute medical ward as there was increasing concerns about her physical health. She is hypotensive, bradycardic. Jenna is cooperating to some extent and will eat low calorie foods and sugar free juices. However, she is refusing to stay on the unit and is threatening to abscond. On the advice, the consultant, on the advice of the consultant psychiatrist, as Jenna's parents agree to her being an inpatient. From a legal standpoint, they are able to override Jenna's wishes. Another alternative would be to section Jenna. However, this is not felt to be necessary at, the, at present. Please talk to Jenna and her parents and explain that Jenna will remain as inpatient with her parents' consent. Okay. You want to read points? Mm -hmm. Yes, please talk to Jenna and her parents and explain that Jenna. Only we'll talk to Jenna only, okay? Because uh, yes, it's better. here better. in exam, only one role player, okay? So points to consider. First, acknowledge that this is a very difficult situation for all involved. So uh, explain why, why, what you have been asked to discuss with them. That Jenna will remain as an inpatient on your unit, certainly for the time being. So your task is to tell her that she will be admitted for a few days. Direct much of the conversation towards Jenna, irrespective of how difficult or uncommunicative she may be. Okay, your conversation will be with Jenna. Ask open questions. Does Jenna know why she was transferred to this unit? You need to explain to Jenna that the opinion of both medical staff caring for her and her parents is that the best place for her is an inpatient on this unit. 
you can explain the reasons behind this that is her poor physical health is the reason that she should be inpatient okay like hypotension mm -hmm. bradycardia yeah. yes at the at some point of issue of consent will most probably be raised legally jenna cannot refuse treatment as she is 15 years old her parents have both given consent for her to be an inpatient and this overrides her refusal this mm -hmm. you have to explain her. Another question that may be raised concerns sectioning Jenna under Mental Health Act. Although this is an option, it is not necessary because Jenna's parents are giving their consent. Mm -hmm. Okay, so uh, she can be sectioned under uh, under our Mental Health Act, but already her parents have given consent, so this is not a concern at that at the moment. This will undoubtedly be difficult conversation. Acknowledge this and remain calm and in control. Always remember to be aware of your own limitations. Okay. You can arrange a meeting with your consultant and the psychiatrist consultant involved in Jenna's care. Yeah. Okay. Give me two minutes. Okay. Take your time. Make. Yeah. Give me two what minutes. You will okay. say because she will be telling yeah. the same thing what she yeah. wants. So yes, yes. give me two minutes and make mine. And once you're ready, yes. okay. Yes, yes, yes. 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 Hello, hello. So can I start? Okay, just uh, time let two minutes time. Let it finish. Okay. okay. Yes, you can start. Okay. Uh, good afternoon, Miss. Uh, good afternoon, Miss Jenna. Good afternoon, Doctor. Uh, I am Doctor Krishna, one of the child and adolescent doctor here. Uh, I am here today to take uh, uh, to conduct a meeting regarding one of your condition. Will that be fine with you? Uh, yes, doctor, but I know what you will discuss. So I am not interested in your meeting and I am busy. I'm chatting with my friend right now on mobile. 
because her birthday is there today i want to leave right now so i know yeah what... definitely i won't take I, much time i know what you will tell doctor so uh, i don't know uh, what to say the same thing you will be repeating you should stay here your health is like this that and my parents are making a big issue i am not interested in your in your hospital to stay any more doctor no worries uh, jena it's your wish up to just like if you can spare some time with me so that we can understand the disease better maybe it will be helpful for your social life as well as your health okay doctor only few minutes because as i told you i have to leave for the birthday party now yeah definitely definitely and in fact if you want to live in between that's fine we can conduct the meeting at other time as well right okay doctor yeah so uh, before starting meeting do you want anyone else to attend uh, no doctor i don't want anyone to be involved in my treatment yeah that's fine uh so how far you know about uh, the condition your condition uh, they say that i am eating very less but i don't feel mm -hmm. that uh, i am not uh, i feel that i am eating okay and they say I have, my weight is reduced i have some problems due to this uh, i don't know i am fine talking to you right now uh, i am fine but they are telling I, my weight is reduced and i should stay in hospital i don't know exactly what's wrong with them yeah 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 i can understand uh, your weight has been reduced and you know i got some parameters as well uh, saying that your blood pressure and the heart rate sorry to say but has been reduced okay it is uh, something which is very some for us Are okay doctor me? but right now i am fine i had just now some uh, some drinks uh, and i am fine and there is a party right now maybe in 2 hours i have to leave now uh, so can you make my discharge ready so that i can leave i would have been happy to do that jenna uh, but at present time you know Yeah, uh, uh, we are not in the position uh, uh, to discharge you, and if we discharge you, it will affect your health, and plus you won't be able to enjoy. You may not be enjoy the party because you know you may face the symptoms over there. Would you like that uh, if you you know face some of the symptoms in the party because you know. Uh, uh whatever we have done in the hospital is suggestive of the condition doctor, for test but uh, i want to leave doctor so is it possible or not this is what i want to ask you i want to go now i don't want to stay in your hospital any more so uh, ca can you make a way, easy way for me or there is any problem please let me know yeah definitely you will be discharged from the hospital uh uh let me reassure you for this, this is not something which will go for days uh but for few days uh you have to be admitted till we find that you are okay to perform your day to day activity uh but i don't want your treatment doctor i don't want any medications and i don't want any fluids whatever you are giving i want to remove all these blood tubes something you have put in my blood tubes right now So, is it possible by you to do it now or no? May I know why uh, you don't want to continue the treatment? If you can tell me. Yeah, I told you already. I have a, a big party with my friends, and I have to leave. I can't stay here. I don't know from how many days they first kept me in some unit. Then they told that I am I am acutely ill, and they have brought me to the another unit. They are just spending my time here. So I told you already. This is the reason. Yeah, definitely. It uh, uh, let me reassure you. Fortunately, you will not be uh, here for the longer period of time. But if you go now for the party, maybe you will uh, uh, 
uh, you will not be able to enjoy maybe you will feel dizzy or you will feel you will not be able to enjoy the party maybe you know give uh, other things to her uh, i want to go doctor so i want i don't want the treatment that is what i am telling maybe you are telling i may fall but i don't think i will fall i have already taken the drinks yeah this is because you are presently in the hospital and you are taking the proper fluid and proper proper treatment that is why you are in a position to tell this but once you go there you take in the party some alcohol or something it can affect your various uh, you know sugars in the blood and can alter uh, so all this can affect and you know you won't like if you fall down or something has happened at the over there and uh, in the party it it won't look good doesn't it so uh, can you please uh, uh, as a can you please uh, wait and then we can manage it properly and then we can no doctor can i uh, no can you give me permission for 6 hours i will go and come back i'm i'm very sorry uh, uh, jenny i cannot give you the permission to uh, leave the hospital for 6 hours and then come back i'm i'm really sorry for that this is not for me this is for you and this is also for your social life you are okay doctor i want to sign for you uh, for your family me a paper. And for all of us prepare me a paper I will sign for you that I don't want your treatment. Is that all right? You can leave me now. Um, I will definitely uh, guide you through this. Uh, there is a, a method for that. Uh, patient advisory license services. Uh, you can launch a complaint uh, for this that you are not happy with the treatment which is going on. But uh, uh, like I will definitely guide for it. I will definitely arrange a meeting. Maybe I'm not able to uh, explain you that well. Uh, maybe I, I will arrange a meeting with the consultant and he will talk to you in detail. And if possible, uh, you can have a word with him. And uh, I think he will be the best person who can uh, counsel you. Will that be fine with uh, Jenny? And we are all here to help you, uh, don't forget, we are not as a team of doctors, we are you, uh, as, a, as your family, you, you got me? Okay, doctor. Hello? Yes, yes, yeah. go so ahead. Shall I, yeah, shall I summarize to you? Yes, Jenny, yes. What is yes. It? Jenny, you were keen to go to the party. I understand at this stage, uh, being in, the, in this isolated environment, traumatic but you know sometimes you have to be patient to uh, get well so that you can enjoy better you will have a, a good quality and good quantity of time it's just a matter of few days after the, after that you'll be time fine and then you can just enjoy finish. very well i'll give you some leaflets written written notes and trust me about it. thanks for spending time with me Jen. okay uh, you you told only one reason to her uh, that she may faint and she may do yes that finished then again you repeated the same tell her the other reason that you why you did not tell this reason that she has no right to refuse her her parents uh, she has right to accept the treatment but she's just 15 years old she has the right to accept treatment she has no right to refuse the treatment because the treatment is in her best interest and already the parents have given the consent so you have she has to stay with us in the hospital because this we are doing for her best interest that is the beneficence this point you did not tell when i told you tell some other point to her why you did not tell this point 
I was trying to avoid that point because I I wanted to convince her. Yeah, how many uh, times you will convince with the same thing? She told you that no, the, despite uh, you are telling that she will fall down, she has bradycardia, she has thing. She is telling you no, I still want to refuse. I she told you this much also. Prepare me a paper. I will say, sign the refusal consent. At that time, at least you have to tell her that she has no right to sign the refusal content. Content. You went to pal. Spals is not for this scenario. Spals is for a mother who wants to complain against you. Here she is not telling you she will complain. She is telling you she wants a paper to be ready like Dama, discharge against medical advice. Uh, she wants a paper to sign for refusing. But you will tell her that she has no right to refuse. In this situation, even if her parents have refused also, you will send her home. No, even if her no. parents would have refused, this will be the, you will not, if it is an emergency situation, if she is collapsing or something, you will do without their, uh, without their approval, you will do everything for her. And if she is stable, you will treat her because she may go down or she has any problem. Presently, she is talking, even though she is bradycardic, she is talking to you. But anytime she may faint and she may have problems. So in that situation, you will also involve the court, right? Here, what did he tell you in the Rebecca? He told you that you should go step by step in this case. First, you, told, you will explore why she don't want. You asked her. She told that she has her friend's birthday party, a big party. She wants to go. You told her that her condition is not good. Why? You got to know. But you told her her present condition is not good. She will uh, have so and so and so problems. But she's not ready to listen to this for you. She's telling, I drink juices and I am fine. I drink something and I am fine. So the next step, you will go to tell her about when she said that I will, I want a paper to refuse, you will tell her that you are just 15 years old. I am sorry to tell that. You can use this word. I am sorry, Jenna. And you made Jenna, Jenny. Be careful with names in the exam. I'm sorry, Jenna, uh, 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 to tell you and to inform you that uh, 15 year, you are just 15 years old. You have no right to refuse the treatment. And whatever we are doing is, your in, is for your best interest. And your parents have already signed the consent for us for your stay in the hospital. We are doing it for your best so that later you will be fine to attend much more parties. You can tell her that later she'll be fine. Mm, this point you did not tell her. Okay, and here he said that later on, even according to the uh, here in uh, Rebecca, what is given that uh, that uh, there will be mental act, right? There is an uh, what uh, sectioning. Another question that, that may be raised is, is the concerns sectioning Jenna under Ment mental health act. Okay. She can be sectioned, sectioned according to this act, although this is not this is an option, it is not necessary. No need to tell this. At least we would have stopped for this. Refusal is not allowed for her. Okay, pals is not here. Even if you want, you go back and read this scenario in the this. This is for the ethics. Here comes the beneficence and non-malficence. That is the best interest of the patients without harming her. Okay. Just go back and read the scenario. You will get the points how to address her. First ask why, then give her a solution uh, for her problem. Uh, you can tell her that if she is treated well and if her health is fine, she can attend much more parties of her friends, okay? Or she should not get collapsed, which you said very nicely. Uh, then for the refusal of treatment, this you should tell. Anyone wants to comment on this scenario? Any other points we can add? Please go ahead before we end the meeting. Yes. See, uh, Dr. Krishna, this I am telling you here, what this is saying. Uh, at, at some point of the issue of consent will probably be raised. Legally, Jenna cannot refuse treatment as she is 15 years old. 
her parents have both given consent for her to be an inpatient this overrides her refusal this you have to make her a point and even still she is not agreeing uh, you will not let her you will see to it that she will be in the hospital and this will go to further uh, acts like uh, because the parents have given consent here the co no need to involve the court or something but even the social workers can be involved and also if there is any problem if uh, she she is giving you threatening for absconding again what he said there is mental health act here she can be sectioned under mental health act okay although this is an option it is not necessary because jenna's parents have already given consent okay so if she still she is not agreeing you can tell her uh, we, I will arrange one more meeting with our consultant and uh, uh, and also one more special specialized consultant for your health like this. Okay, if you use psychiatric, maybe they will be angry or something. You can say your your consultant and the consultant who is specialized in your for your uh, mental health or how do you say for psychiatrist? Any 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 suggestions? For your emotional feelings. Okay. Any comments before we end? Doctor Noor, uh, I have uh, okay. If, if the scenario is finished, I I got some uh, information regarding this research stations weeks. So I will just share in one minute. Okay, no problem. Share to me. Uh, what I was telling, psychiatrist alternate word, what you said, Dr. Krishna? I also forget. Sorry. See, what I want to tell you Mental is... Mental health, doctor. Yeah, but I don't know whether the, the teenagers will, ex will accept your word mental. Okay. A doctor specialized in mental health. Doctor specialized in emotion uh, for uh, dealing with your emotional things. Mm. Emotional changes. Yeah. Because we can tell you, you think I am mental. I don't know. I, this is my feeling. I'm not. Yeah, sure. Someone no, was saying can... mental doctor, but I feel that that uh -huh. was that's more. No, no. Uh, your, uh, I can understand. Uh, you can provide the empathy. Meanwhile, you can say that I psychiatrist is a is a jargon. Uh... No, not a jargon. They are telling they endocrinologist take... gland doctor for gynecologist woman doctor. You got my point. For ophthalmologist see? eye doctor. For everything, they are giving some simple word. For cardiologist heart doctor. Okay. So like this. For so, this, I think we can. Change, uh, we can change. We have a team of doctors. Uh, the emotion, uh, the ch challenges. You are the doctor specialized in your uh, emotional feelings, also. No problem. Emotional challenges, emotions. challenges you are facing. We have a uh, we have doctors. Uh, we have team of doctors which will help you. Yeah. And right. We can take the counseling session with them. Yeah, uh, and Dr. Krishna and even Dr. Satish, what I want to tell you is be calm and think that uh, you are uh, you are talking to a normal patient or person like explaining his condition in the exam. And uh, the same thing you will not repeat in communication. Like once you told her that if you go to the party, you will fall down, colors, you explain her once. The second thing you will think to explain her something else means to bring her back to the situation in somewhere. If you repeat the same thing, the examiner will think that uh, the scenario went just in the same conversation. Okay. I was about to tell him, I uh, tell her that if you fall down first, then second time when I was telling her, I was trying to tell her that how will you feel if you, your friends in front of friend, your friends, you will fall I, down. Whatever but you can was, tell her. Uh, but like, you know, talking to talking to teenager is sometimes sometimes it yes. is like you have to. Think, uh, yeah, yeah, they will tell you time. all these things in the exams also. Like, doctor, I don't want to talk to you. Can I leave now? Like this. 
you will just simply tell because you have to run the show for 9 minutes but i, I handle it very calmly <laughs> yeah, yeah, sure. <laughs> you will tell you like this only in the exam doctor right now i want to leave can you allow me yeah. to leave like this so you have to dr satish uh, you also have the exam now yeah 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 which date uh, it's on uh, 27th first first show no no second show in evening second show oh, okay 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 i'll just send you my where whatsapp you number share? you where did you share dr satish you did not share me the, anything I will okay. share you my WhatsApp number. Just text me. Okay. What, Doctor Satish? You shared me anything? Just a minute. Ah, uh, I, I, I am going to send. Okay. This is a twenty-two uh, weeks. It will be a common decision. If both agrees, we'll be resuscitating. In twenty-three weeks, we'll be resuscitating. Unless the parents do not agree, we will. If if this scenario was in 23 weeks, we should have followed according to the parents' wish. In 24 weeks, the decision to be resuscitating will be this is taken at the time of the uh, delivery and in the, in, uh, after looking after the condition of the baby. From the 20 25 weeks, we will be doing all the resuscitation approach, including the chest compression and adrenaline. Okay. This is two thousand six, doctor. Yeah, 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 yeah. You sent me sorry, Asa. I will see it. Yeah, uh, but just I want to be sure. For, this is the last guideline because nowadays I'm I'm feeling everything is changing. Yeah, uh, Doctor Satish found out the recent one. Yeah. If he sends me, I will share here. No problem. But one thing I want to tell you about this. Uh, what I have shared here. um here you see 22 weeks the chance of survival is very less you see only 1 in 100 babies will survive with likely severe disability at 22 weeks at 23 weeks you have 2 to 3 babies out of 10 babies survive okay in even in this 2 to 3 babies if they survive two thirds have moderate to severe disability Okay, so two to three babies in ten babies will survive. Out of eight, again two babies will have moderate to severe disability. So in twenty-four weeks, four to five babies in ten babies will survive, and you you can see here half of them will have moderate to severe disability. So fifty percent survival here. Up to five babies will survive. Up to five babies don't survive. So in this five babies survive, fifty percent of them will have moderate to severe disability. Okay, uh, so twenty-two weeks is less likely for resuscitation. In twenty-five weeks, what happens? More babies will survive. So our scenario was what twenty-six weeks child. So twenty-five weeks babies, there are chances of six to seven in ten babies to survive. Out of which four in moderate to severe disability. So, uh, out of six to seven babies, that is two thirds of the children will survive. Okay, and in that, uh, four babies out of ten will have moderate to severe disability. Okay, so definitely the child in twenty six weeks will go for uh, resuscitation. You have to go. Doctor Noor, I have sent you now. Okay, I will share.
too long. No, we will not read. We will not re read everything. Just we should know. Twenty less than twenty-two weeks. Expectant mother should ideally be managed on gynecology ward. The obstetric team should counsel parents that these gestations of fetus are is previable and cannot leave. So, if less than twenty-two weeks, they will the pa the parents will be counselled that they cannot leave. Neonatal team input should be soft if parents require further reassurance. The parent should be informed that even though the baby is pre-viable, it may still show some signs of life at delivery and in this circumstance, it should be re re registered as live birth. But still we say that these children, even though they can be viable at birth, they cannot leave. This will be counseled to the parents. Next, for 22, to 22 plus 0 to 22 plus 6 weeks, babies born in this gestational age group are always at high risk or extremely high risk group for poor outcome. It is now standard practice to include babies of this age to consider resuscitation based on their risk assessment. Okay. Resuscitation should only be attempted and intensive care offered if after thorough discussion with an experienced neo neonatologist about risk and long-term outcomes and the clinicians and parents agree that this is in baby's best interest. So this is a common decision on the 22nd weeks. Okay, yes. Mm -hmm. So 22nd to 22 plus six weeks, we will attempt the resuscitation and intensive care will be offered if after discussion with experienced neonatologist and about the risks and long-term outcomes and the clinicians and parents agree. If the parents agree, if the parents don't agree, like in our scenario, we will not resuscitate, right? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay. So I'll share the next picture now. So for 23 to 23 plus six weeks, in the best interest of the baby, a decision not to start resuscitation is an appropriate approach if parents have expressed this uh, wish. Even in 23 to 23 plus six, if the parents have expressed their wish to not resuscitate, uh, we will not resuscitate. The decision to initiate resuscitation should be based on risk assessment before the birth in conjunction with an assessment of the baby at birth. Again, same like the last one, right? This also. So uh, yeah. you... uh, from, from the doctor's side, we like to resuscitate. Uh, it depends on the parents' decision. Yeah, same for 22 and 23 weeks. Up to no, 20... no, in 22. 22 weeks we also we can also uh, like uh, avoid like we, they, if there is no chance we can give idea not to resuscitate mm -hmm, mm -hmm. okay here uh, we can wish to resuscitate but the if the parents do not wish to resuscitate we can accept with their uh, uh, means uh, yeah, yeah with their wish, autonomy yeah. autonomy yeah okay Okay, so here 24 to 24 plus six weeks, if baby is assessed to be more immature than expected or born in poor condition, it may appropriate not to start resuscitation, even if pre-birth plan was for active care. So again, depends upon the baby's condition. We have expected that the baby is to be 24 to 24 plus six weeks, but it may be still immature and poor then uh, even though we have put the pre-birth plan, we will not resuscitate. So in shortcut, we can say like, we, we, the decision will be taken at the delivery room yeah, whether to yeah. go for resuscitation or not. Okay. Next is 25 to 25 plus six weeks. When gestational is 25 weeks or more, it is appropriate to resuscitate babies routinely at their gestation. So you will do the resuscitation for these babies. Okay, I will share these pictures. You people can uh, read it by yourself, the other details. Mainly we should know that uh, for 22, below 22 weeks, we will not resuscitate. And for 22 weeks and above, 
up to 22 plus six weeks. The doctors will also tell that these babies will have lots of problems and does not show interest in resuscitation unless the parents are interested. And if it is in the baby's best interest at birth, you can attempt. And uh, even for the 23 weeks also, uh, you can tell the parents that you can resuscitate. Uh, the decision to initiate resuscitation should be based on risk assessment before the birth in conjunction with assessment of the baby at birth. Again, assessment of the baby of the birth, you will take a decision at the birth. But if the parents say do not resuscitate, you will go with them. No problem. For 24 weeks, again, uh, you will take this decision at the birth because the baby may be immature than expected and may have more problems. Uh, you can decide whether you will resuscitate or not. But for babies above 25 weeks, for sure, you will go for resuscitation. Okay, so know this. Okay, thank you. Dr. Thank you, Dr. Kishan. Uh, information. So I think our meeting went very long today. We will end the meeting now. Thank you all. Thank you, Dr. North. Thank you for our participation.